Ladies and gentlemen, I am so deeply honored to stand before you today as your 122nd president. As I look out at this gathering, I'm sure that my ancestors rejoice. This is certainly a day that they could not have imagined or even envisioned. And it's so fitting that as we come together today on the Eastern Shore, that one of Maryland's greatest heroines will soon be recognized on US currency, the first woman and indeed the first woman of color to do so. I take a moment of personal privilege and pride to acknowledge the legacy of Harriet Tubman, who was a daughter of Maryland. As I stand before you today, I'm humbled by the honor and the trust that you have bestowed upon me. I'm going to do my very best to fulfill my obligations with care, with consideration, with collaboration, with a clean, uh, clear eye, excuse me, to inclusion and a diversity of opinion with, at its heart is the well-being of our profession, the men and the women who serve in it, and the members of the public who are benefactors of it. That will be my mission. Each president takes the helm, knowing that he or she is merely a steward of a ship, hoping to keep it sailing in the right direction, with initiatives that will take hold under the sails, often traveling to new and uncharted waters, passing sometimes through stormy seas and rough waves, but always seeking a fruitful journey toward a rising horizon. This year, I will continue the work of, our two, of two of the initiatives started by my predecessors. Certainly, lawyers at every stage of their legal career need support. We will continue the efforts begun under President Baxter and carried on by President Schubert to lessen the effects of a turbulent job market for our young lawyers by fostering and implementing the recommendations of the special committee and by working closely with our two law schools. Past President Schubert, so strange to say that, Deb, where is she? <laughs> um, anyway, past President Schubert was extraordinarily successful with her veterans initiatives, and this year we're going to continue on with that work, assisting as needed with the implementation of the veterans dockets, work with the veterans legal clinics, the hotline, and continuing programs that provide valuable resources to the men and women of our armed services. In addition to those initiatives, I will continue to focus on improved communication for our association, including strengthening and supporting the critical work of our sections. I am starting a task force on wellness this year, and I'm planning for the future and planning for our future with our 2016 planning meeting. We have a great product at the MSBA, over 30 sections and standing and special committees, countless CLE, extensive publications, including our bestsellers, pleadings in practice, and our states and Maryland civil jury um, instructions. These coupled with the other benefits that are offered, insurance programs, fast case for our research, discount on uh, numerous consumer services. They continue and we will continue to promote the association so that the Maryland State Bar Association stays relevant to our members. With our revised website that's been very effective, we made sure that the voices of the Maryland lawyer was heard as we undertook to revamp our site. And indeed, the MSBA will continue to continue to speak on behalf of lawyers with a unified voice on the critical issues that affect the legal profession and the clients that we represent. One of the true values of the MSBA is, our, is to guide and assist our sister bars so that our local and specialty bar colleagues can benefit their members without having to reinvent the wheel. We have the resources and we have the tools available to help them, and we will continue to do so. As you've heard, we've hired a marketing consultant to assist us in effectively communicating with our members, be they Generation Xers, Yers, the more seasoned practitioners, and all of the people that are in between. And I don't mean to harp, but please, please take the time to fill out the survey that was sent to every MSBA member. Encourage your colleagues and friends to do the same. It's vital that we continue to demonstrate to our members that we understand the daily challenges that they face. And the 420, I believe, successful bar applicants uh, that took the bar exam and passed it. And we want to provide a comfort zone to our members in making their practices more productive and hopefully in a less stressful way. 
I read with great interest a recent article in the Washington Post, and the headline read, Law is the least diverse profession in the nation. I found that fact alarming. The report, the article reported about 18% of the lawyers in the country are lawyers of color, or persons of color, and that women lawyers lag far behind in promotional opportunities and the salary of their male counterparts. As a profession, we certainly can do better to ensure that the pipeline to the legal careers remain open, and most importantly, that we have a continuing dialogue to explore programs and projects that can address the issue. I can look at this annual meeting today and see that great strides have been made over the past 30 years that have attended our annual meeting. I can recall, and there may be one, maybe two persons in the room that, that were there with me, that you could count the persons of color at the president's reception on one hand, other than wait staff. And now we witness a mosaic of individuals who've gathered here today. But we can do more, and we shall. As this is not a woman's issue, it's not a minority issue, but it's our profession's issue, and we can't shy away from it. This year, I hope to bring together our specialty bar leaders, our local bar leaders, academicians, educators, civic leaders, and others to explore ways that we can address that issue. Now, our sections, they are our lifeblood of our association. They present dynamic programs, cutting-edge CLE, they offer listservs, networking opportunities, as well as cultivating authors and speakers. And this year, we're going to have her have, for the first time, a standalone meeting dedicated to our sections, similar to our Bar President's Conference, so that we can provide additional resources, in-depth training, and helpfully facilitate collaboration. Every five years or so, we have an intensive planning process, and it culminates in a conference. The strategic communication process this year is going to include a lot of different people. It's members and non-members. We're going to have law students. We're going to have recent law grads, government lawyers, private practitioners, our military lawyers, corporate counsel, and our specialty bar members. It is my hope that this cross-section of individuals will provide a diversity of ideas and a blueprint for our association as we move forward. So please stay tuned. I think we all know that the practice of law can be a stressful endeavor. Lawyers are not immune from stress, anxiety, depression, alcoholism, drug abuse. As such, we can all use strategies to help us manage better. In order to address this serious issue confronting members of the legal profession, I am forming a task force on attorney wellness chaired by Judge Brooks. Um, this is going to identify factors that impact on emotional and physical well-being of attorneys and educate on members of the bench and the bar about wellness and resources. Wellness is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being. And it's a true achieved through an active process of becoming aware and making healthy choices. We place a strong emphasis on helping lawyers maintain their physical and emotional and psychological health. So stay tuned to the website, to Bar Briefs, for more information. And of course, do not hesitate to shoot me an email about your ideas. Um, I hope that at each setting there is a bookmark. Um, and the bookmark uh, is a saying that I found and it does say, I am only one, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can still do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. It must believe in the past, it must believe in the future, but most above all, it must believe in the capacity of its own people. So to learn from the past that they can get a judgment in creating their own future. And that was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get busy creating our own future.